So our physics teachers will tell us that when objects fall, they all accelerate at the same acceleration, right? They accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared, the acceleration due to gravity. But they'll add that that's technically only true in a vacuum, right? Where there is no air resistance. In the real world where there is air resistance, if I were to drop, say, a ping pong ball, uh, which is incredibly light, and I were to drop a heavy metal ball that's the exact same size and shape, those two objects would not accelerate at the same rate because there is air resistance. And when I blow, I, mean, I can illustrate that simply by, by blowing and giving air resistance, right? Like putting force caused by the wind on a ping pong ball. Imagine just blowing on a ping pong ball. That ping pong ball will go flying away. Now imagine just blowing on a metal ball is not going to go very far, right? So those two objects, which have very different masses, do not accelerate at the exact same rate when there's air resistance because they respond differently to that force caused by the, the, the wind, right? So when I drop those two objects, you know, that heavier object is undoubtedly going to fall faster than the lighter one. This is why Galileo had to kind of devise a creative experiment to show that, you know, in the absence of air resistance, these things accelerate at the same rate. Because because in everyday life, you know, heavy objects appear to fall faster in the presence of, of air resistance. Well, what we're gonna do in this lab is we're gonna create a, 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 our own leaning tower of Pisa inside Fortnite, and we're gonna see how Fortnite handles air resistance. Is it just ignoring it? Is it is it giving the same amount of air resistance to all objects, or does it somehow depend on, on mass, or you know, what, what exactly is going on? Right? Are they following the same rules as the natural world? And to understand what we're going to do, we need to kind of think through what would happen in real life. So let's say that I am standing on a leaning tower and I have two heavy uh, like cannonball type things. All right. One of them is uh, one kilogram and the other one is 10 kilograms. OK, so it's 10 times heavier. Right. But they're both, you know, one kilogram is like two pounds. It's, it's, it's got some weight to it. And I'm going to drop those at the exact same time. Right um, now, you got to think to yourself: there's air resistance, right? That's that's blowing on each of these, but that the air resistance is going to impact the one kilogram uh, ball a little bit more than it's going to impact the ten kilogram ball. So as those are dropping, I'm going to expect probably this ten kilogram ball to fall just a little bit faster. Another way to another way to put it is it's going to reach a terminal velocity, perhaps at a little higher velocity than than this one right but it's gonna it's gonna accelerate a little faster it's gonna reach a little higher speed as it's going now what if i took a 10 kilogram ball that same 10 kilogram ball and i took a 100 kilogram ball now again the air resistance is probably going to impact the 10 kilogram a little bit and it's going to impact the 100 kilogram just a, a tiny bit but really it's going to impact these two less than it did the one and the 10, right? And so in other words, the heavier these objects get, the less air resistance matters. So as these two objects are falling, I might expect to see the 100 kilogram ball falling just a little bit faster than the 10 kilogram ball. But that difference is probably gonna become less significant as these objects get heavier and heavier. And in essence, that's really what Galileo did. He took two heavier cannonball type things. One was maybe 10 times heavier than the other, right? And he showed that, oh, they're falling more or less at the same speed. And so as we get heavier and heavier objects, we expect them to accelerate more and more at the same speed if they're experiencing real world um, air resistance, all right? And so we've devised an experiment here inside Fortnite where I'm gonna drop six beach balls. And in Fortnite, I can actually make those beach balls very different masses. One going on one side from a tenth of a kilogram, on the other side up to 10,000 kilograms. And we can see how they fall, I drop them all at the same time, see how they fall, and see if they're experiencing anything like what we would expect for um, air resistance in the real world. And then we're going to drop um, some big things. We're going to drop two really heavy objects, a car and the battle bus. And those are super, super massive. And we will see whether uh, there's any significant difference in the rate at which they accelerate that may be caused by air resistance. And then we'll try something just a little bit goofy, but um, I think it'll illustrate 
how weird video games can be, we're going to drop a chicken and compare that to the battle bus in the hopes to see like, is, is Fortnite treating all the types of objects the same? So not just beach balls or just cars, but you know, I guess it could treat wildlife different. It could treat players different. It doesn't have to apply the same rules of gravity to the, all the different kinds of objects that are in the game. In fact, we've seen in some of our earlier labs that it seems to apply gravity differently to different types of objects. So we have a series of experiments here that we're kind of recreating, and we're gonna test out to see how closely Fortnite matches the gravity uh, that we see in the natural world.